section number 23 of the book of american negro poetry this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the book of american negro poetry edited by james weldon johnson section twenty three jesse faust la vie c'est la vie on summer afternoons i sit quiescent by you in the park and idly watch the sunbeams gild and tint the ash trees bark or else i watch the squirrels frisk and chafer in the grassy lane and all the while i mark your voice breaking with love and pain i know a woman who would give her chance of heaven to take my place to see the love light in your eyes the love glow on your face and there's a man whose lightest word can set my chilly blood afire fulfillment of his least behest defines my life's desire but he will none of me nor i of you nor you of her tis said the world is full of jests like these i wish that i were dead christmas eve in france o oh, little christ why do you sigh as you look down to-night on breathless france on bleeding france and all her dreadful plight what bows your childish head so low what turns your cheek so white oh little christ why do you moan what is it that you see in mourning france in martyred france and her great agony does she recall your own dark day your own gethsemane oh little christ why do you weep why flow your tears so sore for pleading france for praying france a suppliant at god's door god sweeten not my cup you say shall he for france do more o oh, little christ what can this mean why must this horror be for fainting france for faithful france and her sweet chivalry i bled to free all men you say france bleeds to keep men free o oh, little lovely christ you smile what guardian is in store for gallant france for glorious france and all her valiant corp behold i live and france like me shall live for evermore dead fires if this is peace this dead and laden thing then better far the hateful fret the sting better the wound for ever seeking balm than this gray calm is this pain's surcease better far the ache the long drawn dreary day the night's white wake better the choking sigh the sobbing breath than passion's death or eflam i can remember when i was a little young girl how my old mommy would sit out of doors in the evenings and look up at the stars and groan and i would say mommy what makes you groan so and she would say i am groaning to think of my poor children they do not know where i be and i don't know where they be i look up at the stars and they look up at the stars sojourner truth i think i see her sitting bowed and black stricken and seared with slavery's mortal scars reft of her children lonely anguished yet still looking at the stars symbolic mother we thy myriad sons pounding our stubborn hearts on freedom's bars clutching our birthright fight with faces set still visioning the stars oblivion 
from the french of massillon koiku haiti i hope when i am dead that i shall lie in some deserted grave i cannot tell you why but i should like to sleep in some neglected spot unknown to every one by every one forgot there lying i should taste with my dead breath the utter lack of life the fullest sense of death and i should never hear the note of jealousy or hate the tribute paid by passers-by to tombs of state to me would never penetrate the prayers and tears that futility bring torture to dead and dying ears there i should lie annihilate and my dead heart would bless oblivion the shroud and envelope of happiness end of section 23 recording by linda Marie nielsen vancouver b c Section number 24 of the Book of American Negro Poetry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The Book of American Negro Poetry. Edited by James Weldon Johnson section twenty four and spencer before the feast of shushan garden of shushan after eden all terrace pool and flower recollect thee ye wavers in saffron and haze and tyrian purple tell yet what range in color wakes the eye sorcerer release the dreams born here when drowsy shifting palm shade espels the brain and sound ye with harp and flute ner essay before these star noted birds escaped from paradise a while too stir all dark and dear and passionate desire till mine arms go out to be mocked by the softly kissing body of the wind slave send vashti to her king the fiery wattles of the sun startle into flame the marble towers of shushan so at each day's wane two peers the one in heaven the other on earth welcome with their splendor the peerless beauty of the queen cushioned at the queen's feet and upon her knee finding glory for mine head still nearly shamed am i the king to bend and kiss with sharp breath the olive pink of sandaled toes between or lift me high to the magnet of a gaze dusky like the pool when but the moon ray strikes to its depth or closer pressed to crush a grape gainst lips redder than the grape a rose in the night of her hair then sharon's rose in my arms and i am hard to force the petals wide and you are fast to suffer and be sad is any prophet come to teach a new thing now in a more apt time have him maze how you say love is sacrament how say vashti love is both bread and wine how to the altar may not come to break and drink hulky flesh nor fleshly spirit i thy lord like not manna for meat as adjudan i thy master drink and red wine plenty and when i thirst eat meat and full when i hunger i thy king teach you and leave you when i list no woman in all persia sets out strange action to confuse persia's lord 
love is but desire and thy purpose fulfillment i thy king so say at the carnival gay little girl of the diving tank i desire a name for you nice as a right glove fits for you who admit the malodorous mechanics of this unlovely thing our darling of spirit and form i know you a glance and what you are sits by the fire in my heart my limousine lady knows you or why does the slant envy of her eye mark your straight air and radiant inclusive smile gilt pins a fig leaf innocence is its own adorning the bull-necked man knows you this first time his itching flesh sees form divine and vibrant health and thinks not of his advocation i came in curiously set on no diversion save that my mind might safely nurse its brood of misdeeds in the presence of a blind crowd the color of life was gray everywhere the setting seemed right for my mood here the sausage and garlic booth sent unholy incense skyward there a quivering female thing gestured assassinations and lied gestured assassinations and lied to call it dancing there too were games of chance with chances for none but oh girl of the tank at last gleaming girl how intimately pure and free the gaze you send the crowd as though you know the dearth of beauty in its sordid life we need you my limousine lady the bull-necked man and i seeing you here brave and water clean leaven for the heavy ones of earth i am swift to feel that what makes the plotter glad is good and whatever is good is god the wonder is that you are here i have seen the queer in queer places but never before a heaven fed naiad of the carnival tank little diver destiny for you like as for me is shod in silence years may seep into your soul the back illy of the usual and the expedient i implore neptune to claim his child to-day the wife woman maker of sevens in the scheme of things from earth to star thy cycle holds whatever is fate and over the border the bar though rank and fierce the mariner sailing the seven seas he prays as he holds his glass to his eyes coaxing the pleiades i cannot love them and i feel your glad chiding from the grave that my all was only worth at all what joy to you it gave these seven links the law compelled for the human chain i cannot love them and you oh sevenfold months in flanders slain a jungle there a cave here bred six and a million years sure and strong mate for mate such love as culture fears i gave you clear the oil and wine you saved me your hob and hearth see how even life may be ere thee sickle comes and leaves a swath but i can wait the seven of moons or years i spare hoarding the heart's plenty nor spend a drop nor share so long but outlives a smile and a silken gown then gaily i reach up from my shroud and you glory clad reach down translation we trekked into a far country 
my friend and i our deeper content was never spoken but each knew all the other said he told me how calm his soul was laid by the lack of anvil and strife the wooing kestrel i said mutes his mating note to please the harmony of this sweet silence and when at the day's end we laid tired bodies gainst the loose warm sands and the air fleeced its particles for a coverlet when star after star came out to guard their lovers in oblivion my soul so leapt that my evening prayer stole my morning song dunbar ah how poets sing and die make one song and heaven takes it have one heart and beauty breaks it chatterton shelley keats and i ah how poets sing and die end of section 24 recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver bc Section 25 of the Book of American Negro Poetry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Gore. The Book of American Negro Poetry, edited by James Weldon Johnson. Section 25, Alex Rogers why adam sinned i hear the old folks talking in our house the other night about adam in the scripture long ago the lady folk all abused him said he knowed it wasn't right and course the men folk they all said that's so i felt sorry for mr adam and i felt like putting in cause i knows more than they do all about what made adam sin adam never had no mammy for to take him on her knee and teach him right from wrong and show him things he ought to see i knows down in my heart he'd a let that apple be but adam never had no dear old mammy he never knew no childhood round the old log cabin door he never know no pickin' any life. He started in a great big grown-up man, and what is more, he never had the right kind of wife. Just s'pose he had a mammy when that temptin' did begin, and she'd a come and told him, Son, don't eat that. That's a sin. But Adam never had no mammy for to take him on her knee and teach him right from wrong and show him things he ought to see. I knows down in my heart he'd let that apple be. But Adam never had no dear old mammy. The Rain Song Brother Simmons Walk right in, Brother Wilson. How you feeling today? Brother Wilson. Yes, moderate, Brother Simmons, but then I generally feels that way. Brother Simmons. Here's white and black and brown and green. How's all you gentlemen's been? Brother White. My health is good, but my bin is slack. Brother Black. I's been suffering lot with pains in my back. Brother Brown. My old woman's sick, but I's all right. Brother Green. Yes, I went after doctor for her t'other night. Brother Simmons. Here's Sandy Turner as I live. Brother Turner. Yes, I didn't expect to get here, but here I is brother simmons now gentlemen's make yourselves to home there's nothing to fear my old woman's gone 
My stars, the weather's powerful warm. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a storm. Brother Brown. No, Brother Simmons, we can safely say tain't going to be no storm today, cause here in facts it's mighty plain, and any time you sees em, you can look for rain. Any time you hears the chairs and the tables crack, and the folks with rheumatics, the giants is on the rack. All. Look out for rain. Rain, rain. When the ducks quack loud and the peacocks cry, and the far-off hills seem to be right nigh, prepare for rain, rain, rain. When the old cat on the hearth with a velvet paws gins to wipe over her whiskered jaws, show sign of rain, rain, rain. When the frog's done changed his yellow vest, and in his brown suit he's dressed, mo rain, and still more rain. When you notice the air, it stands stock still, and the blackbird's voice, it gets so awful shrill, dad am time for rain. When your dog quits bones and begins to fast, and when you see him eating, he's eating grass, shows true certainly sign of rain. Refrain. No, Brother Simmons, we can safely say tain't going to be no rain today, cause the suit ain't fallin' and the dogs ain't sleep. And you ain't seen no spiders from de cobwebs creep. Last night the sun went bright to bed, And the moon ain't never once been seen to hang a head. If you's watched all this, Then you can safely say that there ain't a gonna be no rain today. End of section 25 Recording by David Gore Section 26 of the Book of American Negro Poetry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. The Book of American Negro Poetry. Edited by James Weldon Johnson. Section 26. Waverly Turner Carmichael. Keep me, Jesus, keep me. Keep me neath thy mighty wing. Keep me, Jesus, keep me. Help me praise thy holy name. Keep me, Jesus, keep me. O my lamb, come, my lamb. O my good lamb. Save me, Jesus, save me. Hear me as I cry to thee. Keep me, Jesus, keep me. May I that bright glory see. Keep me, Jesus, keep me. O my lamb, my good lamb. O my good lamb. Keep me, Jesus, keep me. Winter is coming. The winter days are drawn nigh, And by the fire I set and sigh. The northern wind is blown cold, Like it done in days of old. The yaller leaves are fallen fast, First summer days is been and past. The air is blowing mighty cold, Like it done in days of old. The frost has fallen on the grass, and seemed to say, This is your lass. The air is blowing mighty cold, like it done in days of old. End of section 26. Section 27 of the Book of American Negro Poetry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. The Book of American Negro Poetry, edited by James Weldon Johnson. Section 27. Alice Dunbar Nelson. Sonnet. I had no thought of violets of late, the wild, shy kind that spring beneath your feet in wistful April days, when lovers mate and wander through the fields in rapture sweet. 
the thought of violets meant florist shops and bows and pens and perfumed papers fine and garish lights and mincing little fops and cabarets and songs and deadening wine so far from sweet real things my thoughts have strayed i had forgot wide fields and clear brown streams the perfect loveliness that god has made wild violets shy and heaven mounting dreams and now unwittingly you've made me dream of violets and my soul's forgotten gleam end of section twenty seven section number twenty eight of the book of american negro poetry this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the book of american negro poetry edited by james weldon johnson section twenty eight charles bertram johnson a little cabin des a little cabin big enough for two des a waden honey cozy fixed for you down da by de road not very far from town waden for de missus when she's ready to come down des a little cabin an er acre o ground vines a growing on it fruit trees all around hollyhocks a bloomin in de garden plot honey would you like to own dat little spot make dat little cabin cheery clean and bright with an angel in it like a ray of light make dat little palace something fine and grand make it like an eden fur a lonely man des you listen honey while i splain it all how some ladies gonter boss dat little hall des you take my ban dat's de way it's writ des you take my heart dat's de deed to it negro poets full many lift and sing their sweet imaging not yet the lyric seer the one bard of the throng with highest gift a song breaks on our sentient ear not yet the gifted child with notes enraptured wild that storm and throng the heart to make his rage our own our hearts his lyric throne hard won by cosmic art i hear the sad refrain of slavery's sorrow strain the broken half lips speech of freedom's twilight hour the greater growing reach of larger latent power here and there a growing note swells from a conscious throat thrilled with a message fraught the pregnant hour is near we wait our lyric seer by whom our wills are caught who makes our cause and wrong the motif of his song who sings our racial good bestows us honor's place the cosmic brotherhood of genius not of race blind homer greek or jew of fame's immortal few would still be deathless born frail dumbar black or white in fame's eternal light would shine a star of morn an unhorizoned range our hour of doubt and change gives song a nightless day whose pen with pregnant mirth will give our longings birth and point our souls the way end of section twenty eight recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c
section number 29 of the book of american negro poetry this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver bc the book of american negro poetry edited by james weldon johnson section twenty nine otto leland bohannon the dawn's awake the dawn's awake a flash of smouldering flame and fire ignites the east then higher higher o'er all the sky so gray forlorn the torch of gold is born the dawn's awake the dawn of a thousand dreams and thrills and music singing in the hills a paean of eternal spring voices the new awakening the dawn's awake whispers of pent-up harmonies with the mingled fragrance of the trees faint snatches of half-forgotten song fathers torn and numb the boon of light we craved awaited long has come has come the washerwoman a great swark cheek and the gleam of tears the flutter of hopes and the shadow of fears and all day long the rub and scrub with only a breath betwixt tub and tub fool thou hast toiled for fifty years and what hast thou now but thy dusty tears in silence she rubbed but her face i had seen where the light of her soul fell shining and clean end of section twenty nine recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c section thirty of the book of american negro poetry this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the book of american negro poetry edited by james weldon johnson section thirty Theodore Henry Shackelford The Big Bell in Zion Come, children, hear the joyful sound. Ding, dong, ding. Go spread the glad news all around. Ding, dong, ding. Oh, the big bell's tollin' up in Zion. The big bell's tollin' up in Zion. The big bell's tollin' up in Zion ding dong ding i've been abused and tossed about ding dong ding but glory to the lamb i shout ding dong ding my brother just sent word to me ding dong ding that he done set his own self free ding dong ding old massa said he could not go ding dong ding but he done reached ohio show ding dong ding is gwine to be real nice and meek ding dong ding then i'll run away myself next week ding dong ding oh the big bell's tollin up in zion the big bell's tollin up in zion the big bell's tollin up in zion ding dong ding end of section thirty recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c section thirty one of the book of american negro poetry this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C.
The Book of American Negro Poetry, edited by James Weldon Johnson. Section 31. Lucian B. Watkins, Star of Ethiopia. Out in the night thou art the sun, toward which thy soul-charmed children run. The faith high height whereon they see the glory of their day to be the peace at last when all is done the night is dark but one by one thy signals ever and anon small beacon answers to their plea out in the night ah life thy storms these cannot shun give them a hope to rest upon a dream to dream eternally the strength of men who would be free and win the battle race begun out in the night two points of view from this low-lying valley oh how sweet and cool and calm and great is life i ween there on yon mountain throne that sun gold crest from this uplifted mighty mountain seat how bright and still and warm and soft and green seems yon low lily veil of peace and rest to our friends we've kept the faith our soul's high dreams untouched by bondage and its rod burn on and on and on it seems we shall have friends while god is god end of section 31 recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c section 32 of the book of american negro poetry this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the book of american negro poetry edited by james weldon johnson section thirty two benjamin brawley my hero to robert gold shaw flushed with the hope of high desire he buckled on his sword to dare the rampart ranged with fire or where the thunder roared into the smoke and flame he went for god's great cause to die a youth of heaven's element the flower of chivalry this was the gallant faith i trow of which the sages tell on such devotion long ago the benediction fell and never nobler martyr burned or braver hero died than he who worldly honor spurned to serve the crucified and lancelot and sir belvedere may pass beyond the pale and wander over moor and mere to find the holy grail but ever yet the prize forsooth my hero holds in fee and he is blameless knight in truth and galahad to me chaussier gone are the sensuous stars and manifold clear sunbeams burst upon the front of night ten thousand swords of azure and of gold give darkness to the dark and welcome light across the night of ages strike the gleams and leading on the gilded host appears an old man writing in a book of dreams and telling tales of lovers for the years still trulius hears a voice that whispers stay in nature's garden what a mad rout sings let's hear these motley pilgrims while away the tedious hours with stories of old things or might some shining eagle claim these lowly numbers for the house of fame 
End of section 32. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Section 33 of the Book of American Negro Poetry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The Book of American Negro Poetry. Edited by James Weldon Johnson. Section 33 joshua henry jones jr to a skull ghastly ghoulish grinning skull toothless eyeless hollow dull why your smirk and empty smile as the hours away you while has the earth become such bore that it pleases nevermore whence your joy through sun and rain isn't because of loss and pain have you learned what men learn not that earth's substance turns to rot after learning now you scan vain endeavors man by man do you mind that you as they once was held by mystic sway dreamed and struggled hoped and prayed lulled and with the minutes played sighed for honors battles planned sipped of cups that wisdom banned but would please the weak frail flesh suffered fell rose struggled fresh now that you are but a skull glimpse you life as life is full of beauties that we miss till time withers with his kiss do you laugh in cynic vein since you cannot try again and you know that we like you will too late our failings rue tell me ghoulish grinning skull what deep broodings o'er you mull tell me why you smirk and smile ere i pass life's sunset style end of section 33. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Section 34 of The Book of American Negro Poetry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Khalil B. The Book of American Negro Poetry. Edited by James Weldon Johnson. Appendix. Placido Sonnet to His Mother. De Pida a Mi Madre. En la Capilla. Si sí, la suerte fatal que me acabillo y el triste fin de mi sangrienta historia al salir de esta vida transitoria deja tu corazón de muerte herido bate de llanto el ánimo afligido recobre su quietud moro en la gloria y mi plácida lira a tu memoria lanza en la tumba su postrer sonido sonido dulce melodioso y santo Glorioso, espiritual, puro y divino, inocente, espontáneo como el llanto que ver tierra al nacer. Ya el cuello inclino, ya de la religión me cubre el manto. Adiós, mi madre, adiós, el peligrino. Farewell to my mother in the chapel the appointed lot has come upon me mother the mournful ending of my years of strife the changing world i leave and to another in blood and terror goes my spirit's life but thou grief smitten cease thy mortal weeping 
and let thy soul her wanted peace regain. I fall for right, and thoughts of thee are sweeping across my lyre to wake its dying strains, a strain of joy and gladness, free, unfailing, all glorious and holy, pure, divine, and innocent, unconscious as the wailing I uttered on my birth, and I resign. Even now, my life, even now descending slowly, faith's mantle folds me to my slumbers holy. Mother, farewell. God keep thee, and forever. Translated by William Cullen Bryant Placido's Farewell to His Mother Written in the chapel of the Hospital de Santa Cristina on the night before his execution. If the unfortunate fate engulfing me, the ending of my history of grief, the closing of my span of years so brief, mother, should wake a single pang in thee, weep not. No saddening thought to me devote. I calmly go to a death that is glory-filled. My lyre, before it is forever stilled, breathes out to thee its last and dying note, a note scarce more than a burden-easing sigh, tender and sacred, innocent, sincere, spontaneous and instinctive as the cry I gave at birth. And now the hour is here. Oh, God, thy mantle of mercy o'er my sins. Mother, farewell. The pilgrimage begins. Translated by James Weldon Johnson. End of section 34. Recording by Khalil B. Section 35 of the Book of American Negro Poetry. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Chuck Williamson. The Book of American Negro Poetry. Edited by James Weldon Johnson. Section 35. Biographical Index of Authors. Bohannon, Otto Leland, born in Washington, D.C., educated in the public schools in Washington. He is a graduate of Howard University, School of Liberal Arts, Washington, D.C., and did special work in English at the Catholic University in that city. At present, he is engaged in the musical profession in New York. Braithwaite, William Stanley, born in Boston, 1878, mainly self-educated, a critic of poetry and the friend of poets, author of Lyrics of Life, The House of Falling Leaves, The Poetic Year, The Story of the Great War, etc. Editor and compiler of the Book of Elizabethan Verse, The Book of Georgian Verse, The Book of Restoration Verse, and a series of yearly anthologies of magazine verse. One of the literary editors of The Boston Transcript. Brawley, Benjamin. Born at Columbia, South Carolina, 1882. Educated at the Atlanta Baptist College, the University of Chicago, and Harvard University. For two years, he was professor of English at Howard University, Washington, D.C. Later, he became dean of Morehouse College, Atlanta, Georgia. Author of A Short History of the American Negro, the Negro in Literature and Art, A Short History of the English Drama, A Social History of the American Negro, 
etc. Now living in Boston and engaged in research and writing. Campbell, James Edwin, was born in Pomeroy, Ohio, in the early sixties. His early life was somewhat shrouded in mystery. He never referred to it, even to his closest associates. He was educated in the public schools of his native city. Later, he spent a while at Miami College. In the late eighties and early nineties, he was engaged in newspaper work in Chicago. He wrote regularly on the various dailies of that city. He was also one of a group that issued the Four O'Clock Magazine, a literary publication that flourished for several years. He died, perhaps, twenty years ago. He was the author of Echoes from the Cabin and Elsewhere, a volume of poems. Carmichael, Waverly Turner, a young man who had never been out of his native state of Alabama until several years ago, when he entered one of the summer courses at Harvard University. His education to that time had been very limited, and he had endured poverty and hard work. His verses came to the attention of one of the Harvard professors. He has since published a volume, From the Heart of a Folk. He served with the 367th Regiment, the Buffaloes, during the World War, and saw active service in France. At present, he is employed as a postal clerk in Boston, Massachusetts. Carruthers, James D., 1869-1919 Born in Cass County, Michigan student in Northwestern University, minister and poet. Many of his poems appear in The Century Magazine. Cotter, Joseph S., Jr., 1895-1919, born at Louisville, Kentucky, in the room in which Paul Lawrence Dunbar first read his dialect poems in the South. He was precocious as a child having read a number of books before he was six years old. All through his boyhood, he had the advantage and inspiration of the full library of poetic works belonging to his father, himself a poet of considerable talent. Young Cotter attended Fisk University, but left in his second year because he had developed tuberculosis. A volume of verse the Band of Gideon, and a number of unpublished poems, were written during the six years in which he was an invalid. Dandridge, Ray G., born at Cincinnati, Ohio, 1882, educated in the grammar and high school of his native city. In 1912, as a result of illness, he lost the use of both legs and his right arm. He does most of his writing lying flat in bed, using his left hand. He is the author of The Poet and Other Poems. Davis, Daniel Webster, born in Virginia, near Richmond. For a number of years, he was a minister and principal of the largest public school in Richmond. He died in that city some years ago. He was the author of Way Down South, a volume of verse. He was very popular as an orator and a reader of his own poems. Det, R. Nathaniel, born at Drummondville, Canada, 1882, graduate of the Oberlin Conservatory of Music. He is a composer, most of his compositions being based on themes from the old slave songs. His Listen to the Lambs is widely used by choral societies. He is director of music at Hampton Institute. He is also the author of The Album of a Heart, a volume of verse. 
Du Bois, W. E. Bearhart. Born at Great Barrington, Massachusetts, 1868. Educated at Fisk University, Harvard University, and the University of Berlin. For a number of years, Professor of Economics and History at Atlanta University. Author of The Suppression of the Slave Trade, The Philadelphia Negro, The Soul of Black Folk, John Brown, Dark Water, etc. He is the editor of The Crisis. Dunbar, Paul Lawrence. Born at Dayton, Ohio, 1872. Died 1906. Dunbar was educated in the public schools. He wrote his early poems while working as an elevator boy. His first volume of poems, Oak and Ivy, was published in 1893 and sold largely through his own efforts. This was followed by Majors and Minors, Lyrics of Lowly Life, Lyrics of the Hearthside, Lyrics of Love and Laughter, Lyrics of Sunshine and Shadow, and Howdy Honey Howdy. Lyrics of Lowly Life, published in New York in 1896 with an introduction written by William Dean Howells, gained national recognition for Dunbar. In addition to poetical works, Dunbar was the author of four novels, The Uncalled, The Love of Landry, The Sport of the Gods, and The Fanatics. He also published several volumes of short stories. Partly because of his magnificent voice and refined manners, he was a very successful reader of his own poems and was able to add greatly to their popularity. Fawcett Jessie Redman, born at Snow Hill, New Jersey. She was educated in the public schools of Philadelphia at Cornell University and the University of Pennsylvania. For a while, she was a teacher of French in the Dunbar High School, Washington, D.C., author of a number of uncollected poems and several short stories. She is literary editor of The Crisis. Hill, Leslie Pinckney, born at Lynchburg, Virginia, 1880. He was educated in the public schools at Lynchburg and at Harvard University. On graduation, he became a teacher of English and methods at Tuskegee. Author of The Wings of Oppression, a volume of verse. He is principal of the Cheney Training School for Teachers at Cheney, Pennsylvania. Holloway, John Wesley, born in Merriweather County, Georgia, 1865. His father, who learned to read and write in slavery, became one of the first colored teachers in Georgia after the Civil War. Mr. Holloway was educated at Clark University, Atlanta, Georgia, and at Fisk University, Nashville, Tennessee. He was for a while a member of the Fisk Jubilee Singers, has been a teacher and is now a preacher. He is the author of From the Desert, a volume of verse. Jameson, Roscoe C., born at Winchester, Tennessee, 1888, died 1918. He was a graduate of Fisk University. Johnson, Charles Bertram, born at Kaleo, Missouri, 1880. He was educated in the public schools of his hometown and at Western College, Lincoln Institute, and at Chicago University. He was a teacher for a number of years and is now a pastor of a church at Moberly, Missouri. He is the author of Songs of My People. Johnson, Fenton, born at Chicago, 1888. He was educated in the public schools and at the University of Chicago and Northwestern University. The author of A Little Dreaming, Songs of the Soil, and Visions of the Dusk. He has devoted much time to journalism and the editing of a magazine. 
Johnson, Georgia Douglas. Born in Atlanta, Georgia, 1886. She was educated in the public schools of that city and at Atlanta University. She is the author of a volume of verse, The Heart of a Woman and Other Poems. Johnson, James Weldon. Born at Jacksonville, Florida, 1871. He was educated in the public schools of Jacksonville, at Atlanta University, and at Columbia University. He taught school in his native town for several years. Later, he came to New York with his brother, J. Rosamond Johnson, and began writing for the musical comedy stage. He served seven years as U.S. Consul in Venezuela and Nicaragua, author of The Autobiography of an Ex-Colored Man, Fifty Years and Other Poems, and the English libretto to Goyescas, the Spanish Grand Opera, produced at the Metropolitan Opera House in 1915. Jones, Edward Smythe attracted national attention about ten years ago by walking some hundreds of miles from his home in the south to harvard university arriving there he was arrested on a charge of vagrancy while in jail he wrote a poem harvard square the poem created a sentiment that led to his quick release he is the author of the sylvan cabin Jones, Joshua Henry, Jr. He is engaged in newspaper work in Boston, and is the author of a volume of poems, The Heart of the World. Margotson, George Reginald. Was born at St. Kitts, British West Indies, in 1877. He was educated at the Moravian School in his district, he came to the United States in 1897. Mr. Margotson has found it necessary to work hard to support a large family, and his poems have been written in his spare moments. He is the author of two volumes of verse, Songs of Life and the Fledgling Bard and the Poetry Society, and, in addition, a large number of uncollected poems. Mr. Margotson lives in Boston. McClellan, George Marion. Born at Belfast, Tennessee, 1860. Graduate of Fisk University and Hartford Theological Seminary. Teacher, principal, and author. He is the author of The Path of Dreams. McKay, Claude. Born in Jamaica, West Indies, 1889. Such education as he gained in boyhood, he received from his brother. He served for a while as a member of the Kingston Constabulary. In 1912, he came to the United States. For two years, he was a student of agriculture at the Kansas State College. Since leaving school, Mr. McKay has turned his hand to any kind of work to earn a living. He has worked in hotels and on the Pullman cars. He is today associate editor of The Liberator. He is the author of two volumes of poems, Songs of Jamaica and Spring in New Hampshire, the former published in Jamaica and the latter in London. Moore, William H. A. Was born in New York City and received his education in the public schools and at the City College. He also did some special work at Columbia University. He has had a long career as a newspaper man, working on both white and colored publications. He now lives in Chicago. He is the author of Dusk Songs, a volume of poems. Nelson, Alice Moore Dunbar Born at New Orleans, Louisiana, 1875. She was educated in the schools of New Orleans and has taken special courses at Cornell University 
Columbia University, and the University of Pennsylvania. Author of Violets and Other Tales, The Goodness of St. Rock, Masterpieces of Negro Eloquence, and The Dunbar Speaker. She was married to Paul Lawrence Dunbar in 1898. She has been a teacher and is well known on the lecture platform and as an editor. Rogers, Alex. Born at Nashville, Tennessee, 1876. Educated in the public schools of that city. For many years, a writer of words for popular songs. He wrote many of the songs for the musical comedies in which Williams and Walker appeared. He is the author of The Jonah Man, Nobody, and other songs made popular by Mr. Burt Williams. Shackelford, Theodore Henry, author of Mammy's Crackle and Bread and Other Poems, and My Country and Other Poems. Spencer, Anne, born in Bramwell, West Virginia, 1882, educated at the Virginia Seminary, Lynchburg, Virginia. She lives at Lynchburg and takes great pride and pleasure in her garden. Watkins, Lucian B., was born in Virginia. He served overseas in the Great War and lost his health. He died in 1921. He was the author of a large number of uncollected poems. End of section 35. End of The Book of American Negro Poetry. Thank you for listening.